Hello everyone. Do you know who Stephen Hawking is? During his life, this outstanding scientist and science popularizer made many discoveries and truly bold assumptions about the universe. At the age of 20, Hawking began to show signs of a deadly disease amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. After discovering this condition, doctors thought the scientist wouldn't live more than two and a half years, but he was one tough lucky bastard. Instead of sinking into despair, Hawking set himself an amazing goal – to fully understand the universe. He was really stubborn at trying to achieve this goal throughout his life. Having lost the ability to walk and even speak, he continued to travel around the world. He met with a variety of people. He even appeared on the screen and, of course, he never stopped his research for a day. On March 14, 2018, Stephen Hawking passed away. But his scientific theories will keep intriguing humanity for decades to come. In today's video, we're going to explain some of his most amazing theories. Let's get it on. Before the Universe if you were even a bit interested in science, or at least remember something from school, then you must have heard about the Big Bang. Or more exactly about the Big Bang Theory, one explanation to describe the origin of the universe. It's not just a theory about our planet or about the solar system, and not even about the Milky Way galaxy, but about the endless outer space. In the beginning was the word, and the word was singularity. Stop, whoa, whoa, don't panic we're going to explain everything. Singularity is an infinitely small and infinitely dense point into which the universe, physics, matter, space, time, and everything else was compressed. We know it's rather difficult to picture that if you're not a physicist or a Doctor Who fan, but still try to use your imagination. So first there was this point, and then, or at the same time, it's very difficult to use such categories before time itself. In general, there was a Big Bang explosion, and the universe and everything else appeared. And sometime later, 14 billion years more or less, scientists began to think about what existed back then, in the very beginning. In fact, this question is similar to the one about the chicken and the egg, and no one knows exactly how to answer it. But Stephen Hawking gave it a try. For example, when he was interviewed by another famous scientist, astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson, yes, the meme guy. So, what was there before the Big Bang? Stephen Hawking answered the question rather laconically, but it's still not too clear for people unfamiliar with physics. However, if we generalize and choose the most important parts, it turns out that before the universe there was… nothing. That is, literally nothing. Absolute zero. Although zeros were not yet invented. Hawking compared the beginning of the universe with the south pole of the Earth. There's nothing south of the south pole, so there was nothing around before the Big Bang. If you're interested, you can find this interview on the internet. But we warn you, there are a lot of difficult terms which can confuse you and make you feel a bit silly, like a cat. End of the world Talking about the birth of everything, one can't help thinking about the very end of the world as well. According to the most accepted theory, the universe is constantly expanding. That is, it's becoming bigger and bigger. Stephen Hawking talked about this too, claiming that in light of distant galaxies, a shift towards the red part of the spectrum occurs. So what, you might ask? Well, according to the scientist, it is this bias that proves galaxies are moving away, which means that the universe does expand. But there are no infinite processes, and this expansion must stop one day and be replaced by compression. And what will happen in the end? Seems that something opposite to the Big Bang, which started everything. And in this case, the world will again become nothing. But if you've already begun to worry and look out of the window, afraid to find that the sky is getting closer and closer, then fear not. It's unlikely that any of us will have the opportunity to see how the universe will become a singularity once again. However, Hawking didn't ignore other possible theories about the end of the world. According to the scientist, life on our planet will be destroyed in the next thousand years, and this will happen as a result of a technogenic disaster. He outlined three scenarios – a nuclear war, a genetically engineered virus, and the rise of the machines. The first two are simple, but the machines, according to the physicist, will get out of control if they learn to reproduce themselves. You know, these Boston Dynamics robots don't seem so cute anymore. But don't think that Stephen Hawking's predictions are always so gloomy and hopeless. The famous physicist was actually a really optimistic guy and repeatedly said that it's time for mankind to conquer other planets. He called for this. 
A base on the moon should be built in the next 30 years, and another one on Mars in 50. But of course, there are no limits to exploring the universe and finding new places for life. They say that in the Alpha Centauri system, there's a nice, suitable planet. Aliens Considering the immense dimensions of the universe, as well as the number of planets and stars in our galaxy, it's strange to assume that the Earth is the only place where life can exist. People have been sending to space unmanned vehicles with human pictures, coordinates that indicate the location of our planet, send all kinds of radio signals, all in the hope to be noticed by extraterrestrial civilizations. But for several decades, the search for alien intellect unfortunately hasn't led to anything. Maybe it's for the best. After all, we don't know what kind of aliens are out there. Good ones who'll want to hug us right away, or aggressive ones that'll immediately start exterminating humanity, simply because they don't like us. By the way, Stephen Hawking repeatedly warned that nothing good could come from meeting with a highly developed extraterrestrial civilization. The physicists believe that the inhabitants of other planets could use the Earth as a source of resources if they are more developed. Maybe we shouldn't even try to establish contact with other civilizations. According to Hawking, sooner or later, humanity will receive that long-awaited signal from some planet. However, we should think carefully before answering it. After all, if the technology of those aliens exceeds ours, they might start a colony on our planet and enslave humanity. And this, as we know from different films, isn't very pleasant. Hawking compared this process to the arrival of Columbus in America and the consequences that the indigenous people of the continent had to face. The real problem is also how these aliens will look, whether humans will like them and vice versa. After all, they can be microbes or single-celled animals, or worms that have been living on Earth for millions of years, worms on spaceships, well, or mutants with tentacles in different parts of the body and a bunch of eyes in the most unexpected places. By the way, based on this knowledge, Hawking considered it more likely that somewhere in the universe there are rather simple life forms like bacteria and not reasonable like human beings. Well, for now we can only theorize about the looks of our extraterrestrial brothers. Who knows, maybe they packed their bags long ago and are coming to Earth, but they're so far away that they will, for example, reach our planet in a hundred years. We just wish it wouldn't look like another Mars attacks. Black Holes if you still think that a vacuum is just emptiness, then you're mistaken. Well, at least according to quantum theory, it's quite difficult to understand anything here if you're not friends with physics. The fact is that in space there's a huge amount of particles and antiparticles that arise from nowhere and then instantly disappear. You wouldn't even notice because this happens really quickly. And when this happens on the edge of a black hole, one particle can fall inside and another can break out. I wonder how they're doing there, so small and defenseless. This tiny stream of escaping particles is known in science as Hawking radiation. Of course, it's pretty difficult to fully imagine this process, especially if you're not a brilliant physicist and your name isn't Sheldon Cooper. It's an honor and a privilege to meet you, sir. I know. But let's try to understand. The particles that hit the black hole have a negative mass and cause the black hole to become smaller and smaller until it disappears altogether. Of course, this takes a lot of time, but in the end, the black hole explodes with incredible energy, compared only with that of millions of atomic bombs. And after that, there's nothing left. Like, absolutely nothing. It sounds a little creepy. Hawking thought the black hole should emit particles just like a hot body emits heat. If, for example, an astronaut falls into this mysterious cosmic object, the mass of the black hole will increase. But eventually, the same amount of energy will return to the universe in the form of radiation. In a sense, the astronaut will be regenerated. Ugh. Oh, it's creepy again. But Hawking's study of black holes didn't end there. The physicists said that they lead to a different universe. Are there actually real space-time portals in space? And we're not in a sci-fi movie. Wow. Yes, according to Hawking's latest theory, all that falls into a black hole at some point gets out of it, but in a different reality, as if on the other side. It probably happens somewhere in a parallel universe. However, there's no way back for someone who falls into another world like this. The space portal works only in one direction, just like the ones from Heroes of Might and Magic 3. So, the physicist even joked that, despite his excitement for space travel, he didn't intend to fly into a black hole. Amazing Gadgets 
upcoming technologies, incredible inventions, and other cool stuff related to high tech on TechZone. Subscribe, you won't regret it. The link is on the screen and in the description. Thanks for watching. Please like and share the video in social networks, and we'll be right back to you as fast as we can.